Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing great. Uh, okay. Please confirm that CR, C, A, and 6H works at your end. Does it work? Okay. Just please uh, keep it for the friends that they join us later. And um, we are going to... Uh, start working on the concept. Uh, please make sure that I'm gonna um, pass, you have already the files, but apart from where you have the files, I'm going to just please give me a second and that I rename the file and make it even easier for you to work with. You can download the file from the course content if you please um, go to the course content, you're going to see that we have week number five, how to define and use functions and modules. Also, we have something that is called week five, my calc square. Uh, please make sure that you either rename it or you use the file that I have already renamed it for you and share it in, in the chat box. After you download the after you download the week number five, how to define, please just go to your collab. It's going to show you something like this. Then the last option that you have in the pop-up menu is upload, click on that and drag and drop the file. Drag and drop the first file, week number five, how to define. And you should see something similar to this. If it is the case, and you can see that, please type one. From now on, if anybody asks at class, please just um, take care of it for our friends. Thank you. Um, if it is closed like this, the left side, please make sure that you click on that. And the file that I have already uh, given to you, if you directly drag and drop it here, huh? It's going to show you something like this. So make sure that you click on those three ellipses and then say rename and get rid of week 05 dash. So you should, you should delete that part and make it like the last file that you see on the list, my calc square. Would you please- How do we do that? Okay, who opens the mic? Me, Matthew. Matthew, is this your first class that we have together? Uh, I've been here since day one. This okay, is the awesome. fifth week. Okay, awesome. So please do not open the mic because first thing, it's going to freak me out. And I'm sorry. I opened the thing and what I see is it just says sample data. Uh, it doesn't show the week five my cal square oh. or my cal square. Okay, please just type your question in the chat box and I, as quickly as possible, I get there or raise your hand, then I can be prepared. Honestly, there is no one around and when I hear somebody, it just it freaked me out. So I'm gonna just uh, pass the file again into the 
Everybody, can you see that? I just upload it again. Um, could you please download it? If you can just download it, please uh, give me confirmation by typing one. Uh, especially I'm talking about Matthew. Okay, awesome, Matthew, now you have the file. If you don't have this part, if your question is about not having this part, can you please hover the mouse on the on the left side and click on this one and it's going to open you open for you this panel. Can you see that? If yes, please type two. Awesome. So now please drag and drop the file that you have already downloaded into this space. Can you do that, please? You should be very similar to what I have here. Yeah. Everybody, if you your your page is similar to what I see in front of me, um, please type five. Especially I want to make sure that Matthew is all set. Okay, awesome. Okay. Uh, whenever we get uh, error, we are going to thank you. Whenever we get any error, we are gonna just um work on it again. So let me just go to the next part. We have we have functions. Um, they called it in the history of programming um, subroutine modules, methods, and so on. And people um, define functions when they are standalone. They call it methods if they are part of a class. So I'm not very picky about that. So you can just call call them interchangeably functions, methods. The concept is the same almost. Oh, why I'm saying almost because whenever you have object oriented concept and you have an object and you say the object name dot, huh? And you see something pops up with parentheses, that is what we call it methods. And if it is not a part of a class, we call it functions. But who cares? We can just use them interchangeably. It says that the functions are sub programs which perform tasks which may need to be repeated. So pass values to return a, a product. Uh, there, is a, there is one thing here. If we have a return value, it's going to return, but it's not necessary, not all the functions would return, right? That is possible, that's just one possibility. In other languages like C Sharp, Java, it's not that easy, at least it wasn't. Recently they added some facilities to return multiple values. The beautiful thing in uh, Python is you can just return multiple values. So functions are similar to methods, but may not be um, connected with the objects. And that's what we said. Um, if somebody asks you that, what is one of the most important um, reasons that we use functions is because of its reusability. Because imagine that you create something like calculating tax, um, and you want to use it in, I don't know, calculating the tax for the salary, for the price that you're going to have in your cart and so on. So you use that in several places. So reusability is one of the most important things that you have. And imagine that instead of multiplying by 1.13, you multiply it by 1.14. And if you do it uh, individually for every single things that you are using that, that uh, formula, it's going to, I mean, just raise lots of issues for you. But if you have just one single point to define and to use that tax formula, then you just need to fix in one place and automatically it's going to cascade the correction in all the program. Uh, if somebody asks you that, what are the other things that we have? in the hierarchy of reusability or usable codes. We have loops, we have functions, and on top of them all, classes. The classes are there to define a kind of stamp that we can make lots of examples out of it. So um, just to 
um, summarize the whole story about why we use functions, reusability. If you find an error, you can fix it and it's going to just fix everywhere. Reduces the complexity of the code. If, if a person is minimalist in coding, sure. Uh, and by saying that means every function should just do one job. What do you mean? So imagine that you have calculating the tax, you have adding the shipping rate, you have to do some stuff, maybe conversion if you just buy something from amazon.com instead of amazon.ca and you need to do some. So if you combine them all, like the first price, the raw price, and then just do everything, everything in one module in one function, there is a big chance that we have some issues here and there and finding the problem is not easy. So the complexity uh, exacerbate the problem for us in make the job hard for us to find the error. So programs are easier to maintain because for instance, um, ad uh, Adita is going to take care of tax part, for instance. Akin is going to take care of um, calculating the shipment. And everybody is going to do their job and take care of the maintenance as well. Uh, also, if you break down the complex code into uh, several simpler steps, it's going to be easier to understand. So. If you just define a function by itself, it's not going to help us at all. But we need to call the function as well. It's like buying an instrument without using it. So buying an instrument is something and start using it is something else. So buying an instrument is like, it's similar to defining a function and using it is invoking or calling the function. So till this very moment, if you have, um, any question, any concern about what I have covered so far, please ask. If everything is clear, would you please type another five? Okay, thank you very much. Because the functions are more about some actions and something that we do, the best is to use verbs for them, right? The standards are different from um, language to language. So don't get surprised at why here it says that use function names lowercase. In C sharp, we just use uppercase. In Java, we use uppercase. So uh, remember, static void. Um, main. Um, so that's the part that we write it, right? And we say static uh, uh, void main and main is capital in C sharp. So that's a kind of, um, of cheat sheet that we have to know how to write our methods because main is, a, is, is the main method in C sharp, for example. So defining and uh, named parameters and I'll, if you just, I have provided um, a YouTube for you. We do not have, unfortunately, time for PEP 8 um, a guides line. Uh, just to have proper indentation and to have two spaces before and after defining each function in a code if you are not using something like notebook, um, it makes it just readable. There is something not um, properly defined in the in the original slide, I fixed that and I uploaded. So the keyword was into average and identifier was something on the parentheses. So um, it is fixed now. Uh, the def is something that we use for defining a function and then identifier or a name of a function would be here. And then these are the parameters that we pass to the function. And we have a body of the function for instance, we have total divided by num, and we return that. So you're going to just save it somewhere. So simply, these are the um, you can have others to uh, further. Your your mic is open, so 
just make sure. Uh, can you pass a function as an um, argument? And it is possible, but this is beyond the scope. And this is kind of complicated in, in all languages, including uh, Python. In Python, it is not that, but yeah. Uh, the thing is, everybody, would you please, uh, because you have the um, code, uh, my plan for today is I give you uh, 20 minutes without, without any um, any break. Uh, we continue, hopefully based on my um, estimation, we're gonna finish around 3.30, making sure that you can see the um, quiz. And apart from that, uh, answering any uh, last minute questions if you have. Uh, again, if you have any specific question and you want to make sure about the um, assignment, uh, the best is to ask from Professor Maziar. Um, and if, if there is something that in general you want to ask, please let me know. Uh, and the reason is uh, very much um, obvious. Guys, uh, maybe I say something and you interpret, even if I say it, uh, you interpret differently, or I say it wrongly, and then you you just get confusion, and you're gonna go to Mazier and say that oh Reza said that and Mazier said that, and so in order to just we already have uh, split the tasks, so anything about assignments and your final term project would be uh, covered by um, Mazier, and um, I'm gonna go through the contents for you, plus I'm going to uh, take the responsibility of both exams for midterm and final. Um, that's very nice. Uh, Michael, this is one of the examples. Um, this question that, for instance, do we need to uh, save it in a 2D array or something? What is your guess? Uh, this is one of the questions that the best is to ask from Mazier. Still, we have time. Um, but I think that uh, I'm saying uh, from the perspective of one student and one just idea, I think the best is to consider, did we learn how to use, for instance, databases or saving the file into, saving the info into a file or something? So that is out of the, uh, uh, options. Now the question is, are we going to save them into an array or list or something? That is the thing that the best is to ask uh, Mazier, but longer story short, if we haven't covered anything yet, you don't need to uh, use them inside your uh, assignment. I'm not talking about that in general, guys. Most of the time, the things that you learn, um, this is something I'm not saying that it's uh, for always, but yeah, just uh, let me show you one thing. Okay, guys, this is for the assignment. We have something like this. We say 80%, 20%. This is, this is something that we have for assignment. So you must know 80% of the things and 20% is for searching for the things. But for the projects, in, I'm talking about kind of rule of thumb. Um, in, uh, if you have uh, any project for, you need to know 50% and you have to search for the rest of 50%. That's the idea of doing, it's not just practicing what we already know. And believe it or not, when you go to the real industry um, projects, you see that there are tons of things that you're not aware of. I just tell you that as the last thing and I jump into continuing. Um, there's one uh, friend of us that I recommended and they hired her for a project. And she told me that Reza, honestly, the difficulty that I faced in the first week was incomparable to all the projects that I have done, that I have done in George Brown. I knew almost nothing that I need, needed to just search for every single thing that they required. So um, the idea of uh, these classes is not only just bringing some 
uh, content or some knowledge. The idea is how to search for the missing pieces and find that. That is what you need in a real project. Okay, getting back to here, everybody, would you please run that? Um, my average total num, and then this is just definition of the function. But when you want to use it, you're gonna say my average 23 comma four. So you can just say, what about 24? It's gonna be a rounded number, right? And let's go to the next example. Here, it's a very simple, we don't have any kind of return value. We simply say, okay, uh, just say welcome, and then just print one um, empty line. And by saying that, um, you see here are the results for us, right? So guys, just to double check if everything, everything is um, fine with you. Um, could you follow everything till this moment? If yes, please type. Merci. Bravo. Okay, so let's go to the next part. What if I want to have a parameter and that's as easy as what you see. So we can have some, um, several parameters. You're gonna just split them by using comma. But in the definition, what we added, we have input parameter called message. And then let's run it. And then say my message, intentionally I have used a different variable name for the arguments that we want to pass to uh, the method, right? So look at this one. Now my message is welcome and I pass that one into it and it's gonna work the same way. Huh? Okay, though. so um, this is something that we borrowed from the book. Actually, this is a kind of project that they try to make it better and better in every chapter. Here we have two arguments, sorry, two parameters, and we pass those two values as the arguments. So look at here, we have input, miles driven, and gallon, right? And the thing is, if we do not use that uh, MPG mile per gallon, if we do not use rounding by one, what is gonna happen? It's going to first, let's just let me try this one. And if you just say, if you just say, then now you use this, you call this function. In this line, we define the function, function definition or declaration. And here is a function call or invoking the function. Huh? So we just add those values like um, miles gallons and then now we return the value if you pass 500 as the amount of miles and 15 is the amount of gallons it's going to save it in uh, mpg but it's not going to show anything if you want to see that you either need to say mpg or print mpg you have to if anything okay we are going to just see that um, yeah, for instance, I just changed that part of formula. I didn't do any rounding. And now, if I just show, you see that it shows lots of lots of uh, decimal points, and precisions, right? So just remember, if you are using something like pie charm, huh, then definitely, uh, definitely you need to, um, what do we call it? Uh, just, just you need to recompile it and then you're gonna get the answer uh, immediately. But here you have to go back to the cell that you have already defined that and just rerun that to update it. But there is something that our friends have um, concern about. I want to share something with you and tell you why we insist on using notebook either Jupyter Notebook or Colab. Just please give me a minute. Actually, based on the discussions that I had with Mozior, 
Um, and I saw that he's, guys, you see that the, one of the libraries that we might use a lot would be TensorFlow, Flow, Keras, and so on. And it talks about everything that, this is the advanced uh, course that you are going to have two semesters from now. And it talks about the environments and the things that you're gonna face when, when you get to that level. And it says, uh, well, if you want to have your own setting, you, you would be better off using, uh, what do we call it, GPU. But please pay attention to this one. I wanted to, um, I highlighted that. A notebook also allows you to break up long experiments into smaller pieces that can be executed independently. This is what we have chosen because this is what almost all data scientists work with, like Jupyter or Colab and so on. Um, so uh, after saying that, everybody, please, let's just um, run this one. Please tell me, what is this second underscore prompt equal to 10? What do we call this part? Anybody has any idea? Can you please type? And you're going to see that pretty soon in your quiz. Lovely. Justin, Michael, thank, thank you, correct answer. And Elizabeth, thank you for participating. Yeah, um, the second prompt is equal to 10. It means that if I don't mention anything about anything about a uh, second parameter, it's going to be what? It's going to be 10, it's the default value. So look at this one, default value and name parameters. So everyone please, uh, let's run that. And if you say five and four, it's going to return what? Five uh, and four summation, which is nine, right? Okay? But what if I say just five, it's going to add it to a default value, which is 15. Um, Michael, and don't you mind if we talk about these kind of advanced questions outside here? We don't need to have out because it already supports it. Out is something that we have in C Sharp, just to give you a quick answer. Um, well, why I, guys, why I um, emphasize not to deviate from the course? I audit one course and I actually, I'm a kind of lifelong learner. I always get myself to different classes, try to audit and update my knowledge. And uh, honestly, I can confess that I know nothing. Uh, and that, that's not because being humble. That's because of the wonder of this universe. And I just know a bit of things. And I saw in one of the classes that I audit, uh, when a prof tries to answer one question, which is not very much re relevant, everybody just loses the track of, I mean, the full of the content. So that is why I learned that lesson, lesson recently. I try just to focus on the objectives. Anyway, so we have global and local, and let's just see what are they when we say global and uh, local. Uh, look at this one, everybody. Would you please... Um, here we are. We just say we have X, uh, which is a parameter that we have um, in this function. And then whatever it is, we are going to just multiply that X. Imagine it is 100. We multiply it by 0 0.08. Oh, guys, the book is published in US, so it's the US tax in one of the states, I think. And it's going to return $8, right? But uh, what about the next one? The next one is for the shipping. Imagine whatever the price is, you multiply it by 1.04. Exactly, it wanted to show you both possibilities. Like what? If you want to say, hey, uh, okay, guys, um, can I can I have everybody's attention by typing one because it is important. Please type one if you are here, everybody. Lovely, thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, 
uh, look at this one. If I just say uh, define calc tax and imagine that the amount that I want to buy is 100, the tax would be eight. So the overall would be current price plus calc underscore tax 100. Does that make sense? But what if I, instead of that, I just say 1.08. You don't need to say the total is equal to, you know what I'm saying? The total is equal to old price, I mean, the original price plus tax. You just return calculated tax kind of thing. The same applies to shipping. You could just use zero. Let me just... Please bear with me for a few seconds. Okay, in here, um, if you see here, we have used, imagine that the X that we pass is going to be 100, and that is what you see as a, a label tag or price tag that you have for um, your uh, purchase. And then when you go to the cashier, they're going to calculate the tax for you. And they're going to say that the overall or the total is going to be equal to the price that you have, right? Plus the calc My apologies for bad handwriting uh, of the price. So this is responsible. This is responsible to calculate because you pass that 100. It is going to return $8 and you have 100. So this is going to be overall of these two, which is going to make it 108. Right? That doesn't make sense. But if, um, guys, if everything is super clear here, you know, let me just see. If the parameter subtop is a string, it will be converted to float. If it has the, okay. Um, this is something a little bit off from this that I'm explaining. I'm gonna answer it right after finishing this part. Okay, uh, just bear with me. So guys, this is, if you pass uh, 100, then it is going to calculate and return eight. Does that make sense? Uh, guys, everybody, if you can, uh, re relevant, if you can just, just relate to this, if you can just relate to this and understand the formula, please type five, give me high five. Thank you very much. I do appreciate your uh, feedback. Uh, look at this one, please. What if, what if in here I just use, if I just use one, Point, uh, zero 0.08. So the best is to say calc after adding tax. So the name would be uh, more meaningful if you just say calc after adding tax. In that case, the total just needs to be what? It just needs to be calc. Uh, let's just use the same name for now. Tax and price. In that case, you just pass that 100 and it is going to calculate 108 automatically and then it's going to return that. Reverse uh, form of what it is implemented in this, in this part is done in here. So you immediately add shipping in the overall price and you return that, whatever it is, right? Does that make sense? Everyone? Yeah, thank you, Matthew, correct. Okay, so let's go to the next part together. Um, so imagine that in the main, what is the main? We are gonna get to there. All the time we have a platform that in, we can sit in all languages. It's not as serious as what we have in C-sharp, Java, C, C++, but we have a concept 
And we are going to watch a three, four minutes video today together to understand one of the things that we will cover at the end of the session. But by saying that, whenever we say define main, and we say get the value from the user that goes back to the question that I received from one of our members and said that what if Rezai enters something which is not valid? Okay, it's going to raise error. So how we can just handle it? We are gonna have a complete session for error handling in such cases to make our program robust. But we just consider, which is not always the case, we consider that the user or the client will behave uh, professionally entering all the valid amounts. That's not the case in real life. We need to consider all the potential or the possibilities that comes to our mind as the um, falsy input that users could enter. But here, let's just go through it together. Calcfax, add shipping. And in here, we ask the user, okay, give us what? Um, and give us the, um, yeah. It, exactly, we need to use, we have double for converting a string to double or we have stir to converting, yeah. But, okay, look at this one. It says that, imagine that the unit that we have, whatever the unit is, multiplied by five, right? So it's gonna be the first total. And then we add shipping first. And then we calculate the tax and we add it to the total that we have uh, calculated in a line before and just overwrite the total. So the last total would be the summation of the shipping price and the added tax. So it's gonna be a real uh, net total at the end. But guys, why when I run that, it does nothing. Can anybody tell? Accurate, excellent. We just defined that's the function definition and we didn't have any function call. In the line that you see the cursor blinking, the cursor is blinking, we call the function. So in that case, it asks you, so please enter the unit. I say 10, for example, so 10 multiply five is going to be 50. I guess uh, it's gonna be 50, yeah, as you see 50 something because we just considered almost 4% for, uh, what do we call it? For the shipping, huh? And we calculated, so it's gonna make it 52 in that case, if I just want to show you the subtotal there then we are gonna calculate the tax of that total, which is the, the tax of uh, 52. So you are gonna just get there, right? And now I'm going to, I'm going to define something, look at this one, which makes it a little bit, a little bit understandable. This is what I, this approach is what I always did when I was a student. Um, and later I discovered that in some, in some languages, um, almost all modern languages that we have IDE for, we have a concept of tracing the program, right? But this is a very basic uh, way. So I just seen every line, let me just run it. So here it says, let's say 10, what's gonna happen? 10 is going to pass to this one. And it shows that, I'm sorry, it shows that the first total is going to be 50. And then the add the shipping, which is 4% to that 4% of 50 would be what, $2. And then we are gonna just calculate the overall uh, which is the eight percent of that, and the um, numbers are reasonable, right? 
And I have just received one email again because of the policy that we agreed on with Professor Mazian. I just said, uh, please ask uh, your professor, lab professor. But I received that um, question, why the answers that I have is not aligned with your. Um, in general, what I'm what I want to tell you is, guys, this is the most common problem that could happen. So don't worry about it. If your answers are not aligned with the keys, this is just a challenge. It could be either the problem of the sample, or you can just find your mistake by just backtracking and getting to where the in initial problem happened. I always use still when I want to write a code. I just go through the Excel to make sure that for one, two, three, five examples, I know what I want. And if you say, Reza, why should you do this? Something like basics like Excel. And that is how we can just easily calculate the things. The idea of having a program is to make sure that it's going to work perfectly fine for 100,000 or millions of calculations. But we need to have a proper answer for a few samples, and then we can double check our program. And that is a very normal approach of all the environments that you are going to get into in future. So um, after doing that, so let's go to the next part. Here we define um, some simple samples, like calculating my square function. So we say just return x times x. And you look at this one, if it calculates immediately, you, you see the result. But if you don't see anything, it means that something is done behind the scene, but you do not just print it. Simply, you can just say either my output, this is something that I received a lot before, so I emphasize again, saying that guys, whether you say print or just saying that in this case, you see that we have the same result, right? So before I get to the next part, if everything, everything is super clear and you can just relate to everything that we have started so far, give me another high five. Else, please ask your questions. And I um, um, humbly request um, as relevant as possible to the topic that we are talking about. Okay, Alexis, Simon, Megar, Daniel, Hamed, Sherry, Abdul Ghaffar. Thank you very much, guys. Let's go to the next part together. Here, that's very, that's very unique of uh, Python. Imagine that you have two values like x and y, and you want to return the bigger number first and the lower number second. Guys, just for a simple thing like that, you need to write double the number of lines for some languages, like in some languages like C sharp. As simple as this, if x is greater than y, then return x means bigger number, and then y, smaller number. Else, just swap. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? So uh, please try that. Make sure that everything is working fine. One of the things that, okay, one of the things that um, we don't have in Python is constant. And you might say that, is it possible to have constant guys? We have lots of things that initially we didn't have in um, Python and gradually they added like switch case. We didn't have switch case before in the early version of Python. And there are lots of other things. It even can you imagine the first version of Python, it didn't have uh, arrays. Uh, they added uh, arrays in version 3.5. And then they realized the arrays that they defined is not that much um, practical and efficient. So they created a whole library called NumPy to just add that and make it efficient. Um, so constant is one of those things that we don't have in Python, but do you know how to name constants? Normally when we want to name constants, we use capital letters. Guys, 
this is something that we just want to ask a hey, your user, please, please don't change this value. So if they say that it is written in capital letter, it means that constant. This is kind of like asking from the user, please follow that and don't change it. But is it possible to prohibit the, the user from changing it? Uh, no. There are ways that you can simulate, but directly, no. Um, so um, sample variable, like one, two, three, my constant, that and print that one, and look at here. We have a concept that we talked, and that is global. Means that, hey, when I talk about this sample variable, I'm exactly talk, talk, talk about the global, guys, because whenever you define a variable inside a block, it is inside the block. Oh, um, yes, um, Alexis, that's kind of request to others. Okay, look at this one. If we say, if we say um, that sample variable here, it means that uh, if we say global, it means let's link this one to this one. Does that make sense? And if you say that, okay, print the value of that, it's going to show you one, two, three. And if you change the value, guys, is it going to change the local value, uh, value variable or global variable? Can you please type local or global by L and G, L or G? Okay, uh, I'm not gonna say anything. Let's just, uh, I don't know as well. Let's just do it and practice. If it is, if it is a local variable, what I expect is when I say print sample variable, it should, it should change the local sample to that one, right? And if I, if I just say, uh, give me a second, I'm sorry. No, there we go. If I just say, okay, how about um, sample underscore variable, it should show me what? The value that we have changed, we have assigned in output like one, two, three, am I right? Guys, if it is local, it should be like that. So let's see, I have no idea. So I change the value and it's going to show us, um, I just call that, let me just bring this one, one level down. Okay, here it says, yes, the global val variable default change, this one, and then after changing variable, I shouldn't use that, then it's, it gives you the answer already. So it says that it shows 987, but let's get to this part. And now you see, uh oh, oh, it is 987. Means what? Means whenever you say global sample variable in, in inside the block of the function, wherever you use sample variable, it's gonna just be the global variable not a local one. Does that make sense? I repeat it again. Whenever you say that, hey, Reza, inside this, whenever you just use sample variable, because we said global, you always link that to the global. So here, we didn't mention again global because we already started with that. So it's gonna just link you there. Does that make sense? And that's how we can prove it because outside the outside the function call and the body of the function. I just said, okay, show me the value of sample variable and it shows whatever it is changed inside that block. Okay, so now everybody, if you got that, please give me another high five, type five. Excellent.
Thank you, Matthew. Dominic. Um, there is just one thing I want to uh, mention before I continue. And I don't want you not to apply that for me, just whatever you want to do about me. Yeah. Feel 100%, 200%, guys, please feel 200%. Feel free to go and say that, okay, Reza is not doing the proper job in here or there in any communication that you have. I, I, would, be, I would be glad to know that what are my weaknesses and what are the problems that I can fix and make it better for the next class, right? I'm not talking about myself because I received a few emails um, from some of our team members and I want to address one thing. Um, there's only one, one uh, concern. Uh, people send an email um, that, okay, we have this problem or this issue with, for instance, with Reza, and uh, I said Reza, uh, with Ali, with Jack, with whoever, and uh, they CC the lecture prof, they CC the course coordinator, and so on and so forth. Guys, that is the last step, right? Imagine that I'm saying again that I would love to receive comments and I don't care if um, people want to send it to because I think that that's the right for everybody to say their opinions. Absolutely democratic right. But we have a democratic part. We have a kind of morality in here as well. The best is to talk to that prof first and see what is the issue and what was the cause of the issue. And then if you couldn't get any answer, humbly say that, okay, I couldn't find that. Um, the needed answer may be discussed and I want any higher level to as a second opinion. And guess why I'm saying that to you guys, whether you want it or not, very soon. Now you're like client, guys, in colleges in Canada. We don't have students. You are like clients. And you can complain. Awesome. Bravo. But you are going to be soon people that we are going to be a staff and employees in offices, right? So imagine that there is one issue with you and you just started working there as the employee. Are you going to feel happy that the first complaint is something that you see is forwarded to your manager? If that is the case that you feel happy, I don't have any comment. But I think that the best would be the constructive way and approach could be just um, you expect that the client comes to you and asking that, okay, why do you have used that global variable here as a, I got confused. Can you just elaborate more on it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, again, I'm saying for me, I would be more than happy any approach that you, I just saw that. And I honestly, I feel bad about my um, co-workers because they do lots of things and they don't expect any appreciation, but those kind of things just breaking their hearts. Um, let's go to the next part together. And say def my new function. Okay, that's a very good thing, uh, Jam. Um, I'm gonna get to that in note. Oh, let me just explain it first. Listen, there are some cases for instance, let me ask you, Jen, do you think that the value of tax, which is 1.13 in Ontario, is going to be changing any of the subroutines that you use for calculating the tax anywhere? Yes or no? Do you think that pi equal to 3.1415? would be changed in any of the uh, subroutines or functions? The answer is definitely no, right? For the things, okay, you might say, Reza, how about this? We have some cases that the, for instance, the dentist says for cleaning, the tax part is on us, right? We pay the tax for you. So you are gonna just define my local tax variable, right? 
but the global tax would be 1.13 in all the functions. Guys, is it clear? So in the case that you have something that you are not going to change and you're not willing to change and you want to have such a thing everywhere, you're going to use that. And if you want to change, you're going to change it from now on for everyone, right? In these two scenarios, we are going to use global. But most of the time, the most, and that's the question that I asked when I was a student from my uh, software engineering prof. And I said that that's super easy that you define everything global. So why should we bother? And uh, I remember it took time for one minute and he said, uh, for reusability. And he was partially correct. Partially it's because of reusability. The best is to limit the number of global variables that we use because if it is just limited to the life cycle of this, right? You are not going to be worried about, okay, what happened to this one? So the life cycle is just inside the block of method. And when you are done with the method, all of these variables are going to die. They're not going to bring their impact to the, to the next line. And that's what we want. Actually, let me just run that again. So let's say sample variable is going to be 333 three, three now. And if I just call say my new function before it was my function and now we have my new function and now if i say okay how about now you see that yes it is three 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 and seven 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 and if you just say show me the sample you could guess that it is seven 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 i change it here and guess what guys i say that sample variable did i use global keyword here Oh, I didn't. So just, I want you to think, am I going to change this value? Am I going to overwrite sample variable, which is already 333 into 555? Yes or no? Let me just add this line. So Hamid, thank you. Hamid said no. Who else? Um, guys, there is no wrong answer. Yes or no could be equally. Thank you, Matthew. I, I just want you to be in the... Jam said no. Lovely. Because I didn't say, I didn't say uh, global, right? It is going to consider local. Let's just run it. And now I have one sample variable, which is a global level. And I have one sample variable, which is five, five, five. And then I'm going to just run it again. I'm going to just run that this one again. And then if you say, okay, what are the values that I have? It shows five, five, five and seven, seven, seven after I change it. But guys, what would be the output of this line? Please help. Just guess. Lovely. Excellent. It's going, the, it's going to be the one which is, well, accidentally, the name is similar to this one, which is not the best practice, but this is just for the um, for the sake of uh, practicing together. Yes, it's going to be 333, three, three, because the names are similar, but it's like two totally different people. So now we get to the module here, and everybody, please double, uh, double check if you don't have this panel, click on the file. Can you just confirm that if you click on the file, it's going to show you there. And for those who joined us later, I again, thank you, Matthew. So some of our friends joined us later. I already sent you the file inside the chat. Would you please download it and then drag and drop that file and if you have already downloaded based on the things that you had, based on the things that you had downloaded from, it's going to be something like this. So make sure that you rename it and make it like my underscore cat underscore square. I'm gonna pause here for a few seconds, make sure that everybody can see that. And if that's the case, please type one.
Okay. Lovely. So the thing is, uh, guys, whenever you have, whenever you have something here and you want to use the code and look at the code that we have, in this code, I have defined something that we are going to use document or help to see those contents in no time. That's part of the journey that we have today. So how can we just see and get help? These uh, triple uh, double codes that you see here, we start in the end, that's the part of the document. Huh? And if simply you say import my calc square, and then if you want to access, I I repeat it, if you want to, if you want to access calc square function inside that file, you need to say, okay, my calc square dot calc square 10. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. It's going to show us 100. But that is not the case in, in most of the time. For instance, you want to import decision tree classifier from scikit-learn library. You never say import scikit-learn and then say scikit-learn that decision tree and so on and so forth. That would be a cumbersome process for the user. The best is to use this technique. We say from, from name of a file or name of a library, import that specific thing. And look at the difference. So it's like, go to that file and import that specific thing. Maybe this is the name of a folder or a file has several layers, then you should say my, uh, my calc square dot, for instance, calc square, and then import something. But let's just simplify it for the sake of this two example. This time you don't need to say my calc square, right? You just simply can call the name of a function. Oh, sure. Um, Matthew asked how to rerun it again. Matthew, um, just please, um, by typing one, um, tell me if everything is clear, right? Here I said import my calc square, and that's the name of the file, the Python file that I have. I just said, hey, uh, open the door of that. I want to see what is happening there. Is it clear so far? This line. Okay. And then I said, uh, you know what? Uh, I want to imagine that you have 10 functions here. I want to use this function. So I'm going to say the file that I have already imported what was the name, my calc square. Go dot calc square, go to that method, and I pass that 10 into it. So technically, open the file, go to the function, and pass that argument and just ask to calculate it. Instead of having that as a part of as a part of code in here, technically before knowing that we just needed no, we just needed to have something like my apologies. We needed to have something like this, right? Directly. But what if I want to go to that file and call that function? Is it clearer? <clears throat> awesome. Thank you very much, and thanks for asking. Uh, and then, um, and then instead of instead of always saying the name of the file and then name, saying the name of the function. If you say from that file imports that function, you just need from now on, just say calc underscore square. It's exactly the same as having that as the part as part of the code, right? Hmm. A very poetic way of putting it into words, but Right. Uh, so uh, after that, guys, there are a few things, and we say that double underscore built-in variables, and uh, some of them are for checking um, if we are in the main, 
um, if you are not in the main. So technically we don't want to run the code all the time if you are not in the proper place. So uh, the uh, documentation is going to, uh, we are gonna talk about all of this, but just for a few seconds, imagine that you define a function called it's my add, and it's going to just return two values that you pass. For instance, five and 10 is gonna return 15, right? Does that make sense? What did I say that my underscore add dot doc, and it is going to show you the <clears throat> documents that you have already created by passing that inside triple double code, right? So everybody, would you please run those two lines? And if everything is fine, please type two. Thank you, Alexis, Matthew. Okay. Excellent, Justin, Arne, merci. Okay, how about, how about saying help my ad and look at what's gonna happen here. It's going to show you the signature of the function plus the help that you have provided for that. And moreover, it says that help on function, my underscore add in module main. Uh-huh, so apparently we are in the main. And there's one thing, guys, whenever we use web, whenever we use uh, Chrome app, you're always in uh, main, right? But let's just ask you to do something here, to do something here. Everybody, please, again, say, and I know that you're going to say, Reza, it has no meaning. It does exactly the same thing. But look, everybody, first, run the calc tax. It's going to just bring the 8% of whatever you purchase and adding 4%, technically, price plus 4% for the shipping. And then we say, Define main, get the value from the user. If we call it, call the main, which is going to be 10. And then it's going to tell you final price would be 56.16. And the thing is, if we are in the main, let's just run it again, 10. But wait a second, what's the difference between these two? Hmm, I have no clue. So that is why. I plan to, I plan to watch something together. So I'm gonna just mute myself or let me just see. Um, I would be thankful if you just tell me if you can hear the, can you hear the? Hey everyone, have you ever seen it? Okay, can you say can you hear when it says that hey everyone? Yes or no? Okay. Uh just thank you very much. Let's watch it together. I'm gonna just maximize the screen. Thunder name is equal to Thunder main in a Python script and wondered what exactly what its purpose is. If you have, this video should help you out in explaining what it is and how it could be useful to implement into your own Python scripts. So as you can see, we're in script1.py, and from the script, I want to print the dir method. So the dir method will give us a list of attributes associated with this script. So we'll see we have uh, double underscore annotations, all these uh, dunder variables. And one of the variables is the dunder name variable. And the dunder name variable does have a value associated with it. So in this print statement, let's do an F string. We'll do F with our quotation marks, and then we'll do script one's dunder name is equal to, and then we'll put the dunder name here. And we can save this and print and script one's dunder name is equal to dunder main. So that's because we're running it from script one. So you'll see if we go to script two and then we want to import script one. 
when we import script one, it's going to run everything in script one whenever whenever we do the import. So we can run this, and you'll see that script one's Dunder name has changed to script one as opposed to Dunder main that was just a second ago. That's because we're running it from script two. Okay, so let's uh, give an example here of how this back can be useful. So let's say in script one, we have a function called do something. And in do something, uh, let's just say that this does a bunch of code. So we'll just simulate that and we'll do a print statement and saying running 1 million lines of code. Okay. And then in this script one, we'll call the do something function. And then over in script two, let's um, import that do something. So we'll do from, here it is, import from script one, import do something. Okay, in script two, we've imported do something. Now at some point in script two, say we want to actually use the do something function. Uh, okay, guys, what do you think it's going to show you? Just guess what is going to show you. Is it going to show you anything? Is it going to show you uh, running one line of uh, one million lines of code once or any other possibility? Can anybody tell? Awesome. All the guesses are nice, but surprisingly enough, let's see what's going to happen. Not among the guesses. So when you run this, it runs it twice. So the reason it's running it twice is because it's running it in this import first from script one, because it's going to run everything in script one, and the script one has a call for do something. So back to script two, and then when we actually want to use do something in script two, it runs it again. So that's why here in script one, we can do this if dunder name is equal to dunder main, so that this do something call in script one only gets called if we're running directly from script one.py and not when we're importing script one into another script. So now we can run this and it only runs it once. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and make sure to drop a like if you found this helpful. Okay. So, let's go to the next part. Yeah, actually, uh, that's one of the things that I have struggled because I needed to switch you to some environments like Visual Studio Code or Python, and I didn't want that. And I, at the same time, I wanted to explain the concept. So the best that I could do is just borrowing this um, YouTube that the gentleman was explained amazingly uh, fine. Okay, so what is what is DIR actually? So everybody, please type DIR and what you see on at your end, it's going to be totally different from mine because what you have done uh, would be totally, totally different. And we are going to have exactly something similar to this. Look at this one. When we say DIR, this is part of um, extensively we will talk about this in the next semester, semester number five, um, exactly talking about the in and out. So for instance, what are the ins and what are the outs that we could have? Sometimes uh, we want to go to a specific line number. You don't need to just rewrite the code. You can just use the out or in to fetch the command or to fetch the output of the command, right? And, uh, the packages that we have, we have we have actually worked with, guys. This is something that we have used a lot. So, for instance, we say import in in many languages. I mean, uh, we say using in languages like C sharp, we use import in Java and Python. So the concept is the same. You want to open 
imagine that that's kind of big storage. You open just one room and you say, I want to access SQ um, area. And the thing is, instead of, instead of, in that case, you have to say mat.sq area, then area five. But if you want to, if you want to just simply type area and not all the time, just show everything, everything like that. You can say from mat.sq area, this is something that I already talked um, a few seconds ago. Yeah, Simon, thank you. Then you just need to say from math.sq area, then dot import area, and it's going to just make that area accessible. And simply you can just say area five, and it's going to um, create 25 for you squad square of that number. And by saying that, surprisingly enough, we need to talk about a few things, and I want to tell you that uh, we uh, finish. So that's the last thing that you should see on your screen. If that is the case, and if you got uh, about 70% or more of the today's content, please give me the last high five. Excellent, lovely. Yes. Okay. And apart from it, let me just see. Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. I'm in the wrong folder. So let me just bring something to you and double check with you before we continue. Um, Okay, because the content of today is done and the rest would be just um, talking about the things that we have uh, in future. I'm gonna just stop recording um, uh, just to let you know, we are gonna talk about, so for the record, we are gonna talk about the 19th of February, which is a family day. And uh, I'm gonna get your um, concern about the potentials and possibilities. And we are going to, do that based on the majority of the votes that I'm going to hopefully get for different options. Give me a second, please. So hopefully this is going to okay. As as you know that we are going to have we are going to have the nineteenth as week number seven as a family day, and we do not have any lecture in that. The reality is the number of sessions that we have is fixed and designed for having fourteen weeks. So I don't want to overwhelm you and put that kind of makeup class. Uh, close to your final exam, it's going to be lots of burden. I'm sure that, and I have that experience, that many people um, have lots of things on their plate in the last two weeks. So it's not fair. And at the same time, we need to finish everything. As you see, uh, if you can see the content that I show you, we already have everything for every single week that we have, right? So the reality is, um, to just make a room for ourselves, I am going to, instead of 19th, which is a holiday, in one of the days, uh, high probably, it's going to be Wednesday evening, we are going to have two hours of the class, but let me tell you one thing. There is no class code, there is no um, mandatory uh, presence for that, that class, and you just need to, if uh, it's high probably going to be from six o'clock to eight. Uh, you are more than welcome to join, but it's not compulsory. 
you can just watch it at your convenience. And for that specific week, we are going to have the quiz that you can just answer it till the end of Sunday night. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna announce it um, a week before the family day uh, holiday that we have, okay? So you're gonna have a makeup class link and I'm gonna share it. And for the quiz and that day, uh, for that week, because we start two days later, right? Instead of Monday, we're gonna have a class on Wednesday. I'm going to exceptionally uh, prolong the time of the quiz till the end of Sunday night, okay? And again, I'm telling you, no need for ad class. No need, it's not a compulsory uh, participation. Even I could do that like just uh, uploading a recorded session. That's what I got permission from the department. I talked to them and I said, what are the potentials? And they said, yes. Um, I just wanted to uh, double check with my friends here and say, yes, as, as um, Simon said, it's going to be Wednesday 21st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And why I've chosen that? Because some of our friends, they have full schedule um, and they want to get home and just relax and just watch the um, presentation. Or they cannot, because they have other classes or other predefined, so no compulsory presentation. The reason that I wanted to have a class because some of our friends could join and might then they might ask questions and there is no problem. A week after the, after the midterm, um, we're gonna dedicate five, 10 minutes at the beginning of the session to answer the questions that you might have uh, based on that. Or feel free to send me an email if you have any concern or question about the contents or you can just use Telegram as always. Um, so let me just see the questions that you have here. Okay, actually I didn't, I have forgotten to pause, to pause the, or to stop the recording. Let me just stop. The good thing is we recorded everything. Um, so I stopped recording. 